This video is intended to be the definitive guide for getting started with Express LRS today. And if it feels like I kind of just made a video about getting started with Express LRS, yeah, that was like a year ago, and it was how to flash FreeSky R9 receivers to Express LRS because nobody was making their own Express LRS hardware. But a lot has changed since those early videos, and so it is time to come back and put all that information in one place for people who are getting into Express LRS and want to know like just want to figure out what it is you need to do to find your gosh darn receiver and get your gosh darn quad in the air with the Lewis grips and the flashing and the Wi-Fi and the... I'm Joshua Bardwell. You're going to learn something today. If you're watching this video, most likely you've got some Express LRS gear and you're looking for a tutorial about how to set it up. This video is going to be that. But a lot of people watching this maybe don't know, like, what is Express LRS and why are people so excited about it? And that's where we're going to start. The first thing to know about Express LRS is that it is a high performance, low latency, long range control link. So you're going to have a radio like this with an Express LRS module in it and it is going to connect to an Express LRS receiver that's in your aircraft and it's going to provide that control link. It is modern which means that it supports all of the features that modern control links have like telemetry, like Betaflight Lewis scripts and all that fancy stuff that FPV pilots have gotten used to. It is low latency, which means you have latency down in the four to six millisecond range or maybe lower. And it is long range, which means that the one to two kilometer range of typical like free sky, fly sky spectrum receivers is a thing of the past. Express LRS can go out 30, 60 kilometers or even more depending on the characteristics. For a typical, uh, just casual flyer, you just won't fail safe Express LRS under most normal conditions. But what makes Express LRS so appealing is that it is developed by an open source team. So here we've got the Express LRS GitHub project, and this is where all the work goes on, and all the developers put the work into this project because, well, they, I, they just want to. What, I don't know. What's wrong with them? I don't know, but they've made this amazing technology. And the cool thing about it being open source is that many different vendors can make hardware that's compatible with it. So if we go to a random store here and search for Express LRS, we see hardware from Happy Model, hardware from Beta FPV, hardware from Maytech. Lots of different manufacturers make Express LRS hardware in the same way that lots of different companies make Betaflight flight controllers. Betaflight is open source, the manufacturers make hardware to run it, and that means that there's this huge variety of hardware, uh, all of which is intercompatible because it's all running the same code. Uh, but the cool thing about it is that it is very inexpensive. So because all of the work on Express LRS was done by these open source devs who gave their time for free, manufacturers can implement this hardware at a much lower cost than solutions like Crossfire or Ghost, where the company has to develop the software and the hardware in-house. Some people feel like that's an unfair advantage. It just is what it is. That work that the open source devs also extends here to the Express LRS website, which has a ton of documentation about the project. And there's a link to that in the video description if you want to read about it instead of having me tell you about it. But the takeaway is that people find Express LRS de desirable in large part because it is high performance and low latency and long range on par with anything from Immersion RC or TBS Crossfire Tracer Ghost. And it is way less expensive and it is widely available because there's a lot of different manufacturers making this hardware. It's seldom completely out of stock everywhere. Whereas there can be cases where you just can't buy a Crossfire receiver because TBS hasn't been able to ship them for some reason. Those are the things people find appealing about Express LRS, at least some of them. With that out of the way, now we're going to assume that you're interested in Express LRS and you want to get started in it. And here we come to one of the downsides of Express LRS, which is that it is somewhat technically more complex than the alternatives. It's not insurmountable, but there are some complexities there. That's why this video is here, to help you get through it. The first thing I recommend you do when getting started with Express LRS is download and install Express LRS Configurator. Express LRS Configurator is a piece of software that runs on your computer that is used to compile and flash firmware to the Express LRS module and the Express LRS receiver. And you're probably thinking right now, what, why, why do I need to do that? Can't I just bind the receiver to the module and go fly my quad? Yeah, 
But ExpressLRS has a lot of options. And uh, you may care about how some of those options are set and flashing the firmware is how some of those options are set. More fundamentally, ExpressLRS updates pretty quickly. And when you buy a receiver and you buy a module, you won't necessarily know that they've got compatible firmware on them. And so I'm just gonna recommend the first thing you do is you go ahead and compile and flash firmware to them just so you know what their situation is. And this is one of those sort of technical complexities that I mentioned earlier. So we're gonna download the latest ExpressLRS configurator. Looks like today it's 1.3.11. We're gonna find the version that matches our operating system. Mine is Windows, so I'm gonna download the .exe file. And we're gonna go ahead and install that piece of software. The next thing you need to do is identify the hardware that you're working with. So a whole bunch of different manufacturers make ExpressLRS compatible hardware. It's all interoperable, but when you flash firmware to it and configure it, they may take different firmware. So here we've got a RadioMaster TX16S, a Jumper T Lite, a RadioMaster Zorro. Here is a Happy Model Slim Pro module. Here's a Happy Model JR Bay module. Here's a Beta FPV uh, Slim module. And here is the Axis Flying Thor. All of these are different ExpressLRS hardware from different manufacturers. And there's no receivers pictured here, but receivers would also be from different manufacturers. So here in ExpressLRS configurator, we're gonna choose the version of firmware that we're flashing, and we'll just pick the latest release version, that's fine. And then if we scroll down, we're gonna choose the target, which is the hardware that we're working with. And if I pick device category, I can start typing radio master. And there's a single entry here for all radio master 2.4 gigahertz radios. ExpressLRS comes in both a 2.4 gigahertz and a 900 megahertz flavor. Everything I'm working with here is 2.4 gigahertz, uh, but configuring 900 megahertz would be the same if you had that gear. So we'll pick Radio Master here, and then under Devices, there are three choices. The Radio Master Receiver, so Radio Master makes their own receiver. The Radio Master TX16S Module, that's what TX means, the transmitter module. And the Radio Master Zorro, 2.4 gigahertz, transmitter module. If on the other hand, we were to pick jumper, we can see here there's a choice for jumper 900 megahertz and 2.4 gigahertz. And under devices, we've got the choices for a jumper receiver and then the jumper nano TX module. That's a freestanding TX module. And then the jumper T pro TX module. That's the module inside the T pro radio. And that's what I would pick for this radio. If I type happy model, we can see choices here for the happy model receiver, the happy model ES24TX module, which I don't have, and the happy model ES24TX pro modules, which that's these two modules, the, the slim version and the regular version. Both of those are the ES24TX pro modules. And that's what we would use if we had those modules. If we take a look at the Happy Model page here for the Slim Pro module, you can see they also, if we scroll down, show the firmware target name, Happy Model ES24TX Pro Series 2400TX. And if you're not sure what the correct target is for your hardware, you may be able to look at the manufacturer's page like this. But most of the time, if you type in the manufacturer's name like Happy Model or Jumper or whatever, you probably, there won't be that many choices. There'll be a receiver and maybe a couple modules and you'll probably have a pretty good chance of selecting the right thing with just thinking about it just a little bit. The next thing we need to do is get the ExpressLRS Lua script onto our radio. A Lua script is a tiny little program that runs on the radio and it's used to configure the ExpressLRS system. Now, radios with ExpressLRS built in, like these, may come pre-shipped with the ExpressLRS Lua script installed. So let's just check and see if it's already there. After powering up the radio, I'm gonna long press the Sys key and that'll take me to the Tools menu. And then if I scroll through the Tools menu, you can see on this radio, there is an ELRS script and an ExpressLRS script. And that's a little bit confusing that there are two ExpressLRS Lua scripts. If you see that, the ELRS script is the older Lua script that was used on ExpressLRS 1.0, and you can basically ignore that today unless you've got some old ExpressLRS hardware with old firmware on it that you're still using for some reason. What you wanna look for though is ExpressLRS, and that is the ExpressLRS Lua script, and if we run that, we should see a screen that looks something like this and that is good. Now, if you don't have the ExpressLRS Lua script already on your radio, or if it's sometime in the future and you need to download the latest version of the Lua script, because it does update over time, here's how to do it. 
and we're going to pick the RadioMaster TX16S 2400TX. This is actually the JB Special Edition of the RadioMaster TX16S. comes in my custom colors and it's got my voice pack on it, uh, as well as having ExpressLRS built in. And we're going to start with it since it's my, my radio. In order to do that, we're going to turn the radio on and we're going to plug USB into the radio. On the TX16S, that's going to be the USB port on top of the radio. On other radios, that USB port may be in a different place. On the Zorro, it's also on top of the radio. And on the T-Lite, it's also on top of the radio. Bear in mind that Radio Master radios will also have a USB port on the bottom, which is used only for charging, and that won't work for this. The radio is going to pop up a prompt asking whether we want USB joystick, USB storage, or this third option, USB serial debug. We're going to select USB storage SD. When we do that, this window will pop up and this window is showing you the contents of the SD card in your radio. Uh, if you prefer to just take the SD card out of the radio and use a card reader to plug it directly into your laptop, that works just as well. There's also a second window here containing the files firmware.bin and firmware.txt. Do not modify that or touch that in any way. That is your actual radio firmware, and if you mess with that, you will need to reflash your radio. So we'll just close that window, and we'll keep the SD card window up. We'll then go back to ExpressLRS Configurator, and we're going to choose our module, which is, in this case, is going to be the RadioMaster TX16S 2400TX. And when we do that, this button will appear, Download Lua Script. We're going to click that button, and it's going to download this Lua script, elrsv2.lua. What we're then going to do is navigate to the SD card contents that popped up. So in my case, that's going to be this PC, and it is going to be USB drive F, I'm pretty sure. Yep, there it is. There's all the contents of my SD card. We're going to go into the scripts folder, and then into the tools folder, and right there, we are going to save elrsv2.lua. The next thing you need to do is get your controller or your flight controller configured and wired up so that your module or your receiver is sort of basically working. On the controller, you're going to press the model key. You're going to go down in the model setup menu. And then if you have an internal ExpressLRS module like this TX16S, the Jumper T-Lite, or the RadioMaster Zorro, you're going to set the internal module to Crossfire. Why Crossfire? Aren't we doing ExpressLRS? ExpressLRS uses the Crossfire protocol to talk to the radio. It's like, why well, it's perfectly good protocol, we'll just use it. Or if you have an external module, you'll set your internal RF to off, and you'll set your external RF to Crossfire. At that point, you can verify that the module is working by going to your ExpressLRS Lua script. We'll run the ExpressLRS script, and we should see all the options populate, and we should see the name of the module in the upper left, Radio Master TX16S, Happy Model, Axis Flying Thor, whatever it is, you'll see your module name there. I should also point out that if I power up a receiver that's bound, we'll get to that a little later in the video, you will also see in the upper right a C indicating connected, and that's telling us uh, that we are connected to the receiver. Of course, the light on the receiver will also be solid, indicating we're connected. As far as wiring goes, ExpressLRS receivers wire up exactly like Crossfire receivers. The pinout is the same, uh, so if you're familiar with Crossfire, that's how to do it. The receiver is going to have a TX, an RX, a 5-volt, and a ground wire. And we can see here, TX, RX, 5-volt, or VCC, and ground. And we can look at just about any wiring diagram for any flight controller in the world to find a Crossfire wiring diagram for it. And you can see that TX or channel 1 is going to go to RX on the flight controller, and RX or channel 2 is going to go to TX on the flight controller. In the Betaflight Ports tab, we're going to enable Serial RX for the UART number that we connected the receiver to, and then in the Betaflight Configuration tab, or in Betaflight 4.3, they moved this to the Receiver tab, we're going to set the Serial Receiver Protocol to Crossfire, and we're going to enable the Telemetry feature, and that is going to be in the Configuration tab and both versions of Betaflight. The most basic thing that you can do with a receiver and a controller module is bind it. And ExpressLRS has a kind of unconventional approach to binding. In fact, if you look at ExpressLRS modules and ExpressLRS receivers, many of them don't even have a bind button. And the ExpressLRS devs thinking is 
that binding shouldn't be handled by pushing buttons on receivers. The way that ExpressLRS handles binding is that there is a binding phrase. You can think of it kind of like a Wi-Fi password, but it's not really a password. It's not really for security. It's a binding phrase and any module and any receiver that have the same binding phrase on them will bind together. So in fact, I've got all these modules here. I've just got handfuls of modules, the privilege of being a YouTuber, I guess. All of these modules have the exact same binding phrase on them, and I can plug any of these modules into any of my radios, and all of my Express LRS receivers will just bind to them. That's kind of cool. I mean, it's kind of cool if you're a YouTuber has like 17 different modules, but just in general, if you get a new piece of hardware, if you upgrade your module or change your radio, you don't need to rebind all your radio, all your receivers. You just flash the new module with your current, with your binding phrase, and then all your stuff is already bound. It's just ready to go. The downside of that is that if you want to use this hardware at all, you have to flash it because assigning the binding phrase is done by flashing the hardware. There is a way to bind an ExpressLRS module and an ExpressLRS receiver without flashing it. And I've got a separate tutorial video that I made that I'll link down in the video description. But I'm gonna encourage you to just embrace ExpressLRS on its own terms and accept that they're flashing it is just gonna be a part of your daily life. I'm gonna show you how to make it as easy as possible. If you decide to go and and try to bind it without flashing it, you're probably gonna find a reason to flash it anyway at some point in the future. And the advantages of flashing it, the convenience of using a binding phrase instead of doing an actual binding thing, I think are worth it. Okay, let's continue. Before we compile and flash the firmware, we need to set our device options. And most of these options are gonna be fine on defaults, but I do wanna call out a couple that you might wanna tweak. Regulatory domain, you're gonna select based on whether, basically whether you're in the EU or not. If you're in the European Union, then you're gonna select regulatory domain EUCE 2400. And if you're basically anywhere else in the world, you're gonna select ISM 2400. You're gonna put your binding phrase in and your binding phrase is gonna be whatever you want. It can, it's just, you just pick a phrase. All that matters is that it's unique to all of the things that you want to be bound together. Um, so I'm gonna pick one, great. And for now, that's all you're gonna to need to do. There are a couple other options. Some of them we'll touch on a little bit later in the video. Some of them you usually don't need to change. That's basically it. The next thing we're gonna do is we are going to flash the firmware. And there are three different ways that you see here to flash the firmware. I'm gonna demonstrate all three of them. The first one we're gonna look at is Edge TX Pass-Through. And this is only gonna be available if the target that you've selected is a radio with a built-in Express LRS module, like the Radio Master Zorro, the Jumper T Lite, the Radio Master TX16S, and so on. Edge TX pass-through means we're gonna flash the internal Express LRS module inside the radio through the USB port on the radio. So we're gonna plug in the USB cable and that menu is gonna pop up again. And this time we're gonna select USB serial debug. Then we're gonna scroll down to the bottom of this window and we're gonna hit build and flash. Now, the first time you compile the ExpressLRS firmware, your ExpressLRS configurator may need to download some stuff from the internet. It should all happen automatically. Like you can see right here, it says, failed to find Platformio on your computer, trying to install it automatically. All of this should happen automatically. However, it may take, the very first time you do it, depending on how fast your internet is, it may take five or 10 minutes to finish downloading everything it needs to download. That's only gonna happen the very first time you do this, and after that, it should go much quicker. After a little while, you'll see a message like this, pass through init, uh, and then assuming that works, you'll see this indication that the firmware is being flashed. Definitely don't unplug USB or interrupt this process while it's happening. You, you can recover, but if you interrupt the flash, you'll make some work for yourself to get your radio working again. And if everything goes well, when you're done, you will see a success. What if you've got an external module, like this Happy Model Slim module or this Axis Flying Thor module? If they have a USB port on them, you can flash directly via that USB port. That's what we're gonna do now. One thing to keep in mind is that this requires the 
Silicon Labs CP210 USB to UART bridge drivers. Those do not come pre-installed on Windows at least, and I don't think they come pre-installed on Mac or other operating systems either. So you will need to download and install those if you've never done that before for any other reason. I'll put a link down in the video description to where you can download those. For this reason, this is actually not my favorite way to update. There's an easier way to update with Wi-Fi. Well, I think it's easier and I'm gonna show you that next, but we'll proceed with this just for completeness. So just like before, we're gonna select the device target based on the hardware that we've got. This is Axis Flying, and the device is not the RX receiver, but the TX transmitter. Our flashing method this time is gonna be UART. Notice that the Edge TX pass-through isn't there because this is an external module, not a built-in module. We're gonna select UART, which means flash over USB. And then as far as the options go, we're going to check the options, but it's going to remember the options from the last time. So the binding phrase and the regulatory domain are set, and we're going to leave everything else at the default. We're then going to scroll down. We're going to select our COM port that we are selected to, uh, connected to. Uh, I guess that's COM16. If you're not sure, just unplug the device. And whichever COM port disappeared when you unplug the device, that's the one. We plug the device back in. Oh, COM16 appeared again. So COM16 is clearly the one that is this device. And we're going to hit build and flash. And once again, we see here the flashing is proceeding. Don't interrupt it. And we're done. Now, the coolest way to flash your Express LRS gear, and I think the easiest way, is via Wi-Fi. So your Express LRS module and your Express LRS receivers, yes, even the teeny tiny little EP2 receivers, they can all do Wi-Fi. And there's two ways to do this. One is that the device will create a Wi-Fi network. It broadcasts a Wi-Fi network of its own. You connect to that Wi-Fi network with your, your computer or your phone, and then you upload firmware through your web browser and it flashes the firmware. Or there's a second method where the device will literally get on your home Wi-Fi and it will just show up on your computer that's also on your home Wi-Fi and you can flash it that way. I'm gonna demonstrate both of these methods. So the first thing I wanna demonstrate is flashing the module via a Wi-Fi network that the device itself creates. And this is useful because you could do this anywhere. You don't need like home Wi-Fi to do this. The module or the receiver itself will make a Wi-Fi network that you'll connect to and you will flash the module over that Wi-Fi network. And this Happy Model module is perfect for that because you can see it doesn't have a USB port anywhere visible. I think there is one on the inside, but you have to open up the case to get at it. So I'm gonna select the device category, Happy Model 2.4 gigahertz, and the device is gonna be the Happy Model uh, ES24TX Pro series. And then the flashing method, it doesn't actually matter when you're gonna flash via the browser. Well, what, and what is this Wi-Fi flashing for? That's the next thing I'm gonna show you. We're gonna set our device options just like before. In fact, we don't even need to change anything. It's all set from prior. And then we are going to build. We are not going to build and flash. We're just gonna build. After the build finishes, you're gonna see firmware binary file was opened in File Explorer. And in fact, there is an Explorer window here that has tried to pop up. And you can see this file Happy Model ES24TX Pro Series 24TX240.bin. That is the firmware file that we're gonna to use to flash. And if you're gonna use your computer to flash it, then you can just leave it right there, or for convenience, you could just drag it to your desktop. But if you're gonna be using your cell phone, for example, you might wanna put it on your cell phone. It's really handy to have these files on your cell phone that you can flash in the field if you need to. Uh, but either way, you're gonna have that file on the device that you're gonna to use to flash the firmware. And we're gonna power up the radio, press the sys key and run the Express LRS Lewis script. We're then gonna go down to Wi-Fi connectivity and we're gonna choose enable Wi-Fi. And that is gonna enable the Wi-Fi network in the Express LRS module. Press okay to confirm, yes. Now at this point, if you look in the Wi-Fi networks visible on your laptop or your cell phone, you should see, boom, Express LRS TX. That is the Wi-Fi network being broadcast by that module. After connecting to that Wi-Fi network, if we then bring up a browser and we need to type the IP address 10.0.0.1, .0 .0 
we should see this. You're just gonna have to remember that number and maybe make a bookmark if you're not familiar with IP addresses and that's not easy for you to remember. Now this web page is being generated by that module. And if we scroll down here, there are some things we can do to configure the module. And one of them is a firmware update. So I'm gonna hit choose file. I'm gonna go to my desktop. I'm gonna pick that bin file. I'm gonna hit open and then I'm gonna hit update and it will update the firmware over that Wi-Fi network. Pretty freaking cool. I apparently have screwed up. What have I done? I know what I've done. This warning is telling me that I'm about to flash the wrong firmware to my device. What I've actually done is I have accidentally activated the Wi-Fi on my internal radio module inside the radio master instead of the happy model. And if I hit flash anyway right now, I will make a problem. Do not do this. I'm gonna hit cancel and I'm gonna show you what I did wrong. If I press the model key here and go to model setup and scroll down, the mistake that I made is that I have internal RF turned on and I need to turn that off and I have external RF and I need to set that to CRSF crossfire and that will activate my external RF module and disable the internal one, which is what I actually meant to do. Now, if you were paying close attention, you may have noticed I was a little bit dishonest with that last example because we were not at 10.0.01, we were at elrstx.local. And if we scroll down here, we'll see an option here, forget home network and disconnect and disconnect and start access point. And those options pertain to the ability of the ExpressLRS system to connect to your home Wi-Fi network and flash. And this to me is actually the easiest way. I'm gonna demonstrate that for you in just a second. But before we do that, if you're learning a lot, if you're enjoying this video, and if you think more people need to see it, could you go down and hit the like button? It really would mean a lot. Okay, let's go. In order to get the module to connect to your home network, you need to give it your Wi-Fi network name and your Wi-Fi network password, just like any other device that wants to get on your Wi-Fi network. I do want to acknowledge that some people feel a little uncomfortable with giving this information to like a, some open source piece of software. Who knows what they're gonna do with it? What are they gonna do with it? I don't know. If you really care about that, and if your home network supports it, you can make your own uh, Wi-Fi network just for ExpressLRS, and that's what I've done. I've got a, a Wi-Fi network named ELRS, and it has the Wi-Fi password, I just did this as a joke. Please, nobody get their feelings hurt. It was just a joke. Ha ha, you express the rest, cross my snacks. Please don't take it to, okay. I'm sure I'm gonna get a lot of angry emails. But you're gonna give it a SSID and a password. And then there are a couple ways you can do it. You can actually put this in the firmware that you compile. And when you flash that firmware to the module or the receiver, then it will automatically try and connect to that network when it first powers up. Alternatively, you can just connect to the Wi-Fi network that the module creates, go to 10.0.0.1, and down at the bottom, you can give it an SSID and password. And in fact, it will show the SSIDs that it sees. So here's SSID ELRS, password, nothing. And if you hit join, it will automatically join that network. Now, once your Wi-Fi credentials are baked into the device, it will automatically connect to that network anytime it's within range of that network. And then something really cool happens. The device will show up at the bottom of your ExpressLRS configurator. So here is a list of all of the ExpressLRS devices seen on my home Wi-Fi network right now and I can easily flash them simply by selecting Wi-Fi, select that device from the pull-down, and hit build and flash, and it will just flash it over your home Wi-Fi network. You can also manage that device from this list down here by clicking on the DNS uh, setting there, and it'll bring you to the configuration page if you prefer to do it that way for some reason. This is so freaking cool. Just anytime I power up any of my ExpressLRS devices, they just connect to my Wi-Fi. Boom, there they are in the configurator. Don't plug in USB, don't do nothing, no drivers, no nonsense, just boom, here they are. I hit select and I flash and it's easy peasy. Now, so far we've been talking about modules, but what about receivers? There's two ways to flash a receiver. One is via Wi-Fi, and I strongly recommend you do it this way because the alternative way is Betaflight pass-through where you flash it uh, through the flight controller and 
it's kind of, when it works, it's great, but it's kind of a hassle and it doesn't always work. So I'm gonna show you the Wi-Fi way first. Here I'm gonna plug in my quad and the receiver is here under this tape. So you can you see the LED blinking and it's that green LED going blink, blink, blink. And then after about 20 or 30 seconds, it'll start fast blinking. So if the receiver powers up and it doesn't see a controller that it's bound to, then after 20 or 30 seconds, it enters Wi-Fi mode. There we go, do you see it happen? Now it's in Wi-Fi mode. So if I then look at my list of Wi-Fi networks, I see Express LRS RX, I'm gonna connect to that. Um, let's go ahead and put in this information for the future. It is gonna remember that stuff going forward, but for now we're gonna just need to do it manually. And we are going to build. And I'm gonna go in my web browser to 10.0.0.1, and sure enough, here we are. Oh my God, this is firmware 1.0. That is old firmware. We're gonna drag this firmware over to the desktop and copy it there just so it's easy to find. And we're gonna choose the file. Make sure you choose the RX file, not the TX. This is the receiver we're flashing, and we will update. Now you notice we're not getting a progress bar. It's just kind of sitting here. Yeah, firmware 1.0 didn't show a progress bar. I'm showing you this because this that's just what this receiver came with. But then it says update success rebooting and now we're on firmware 2.whatever and life is happier. And if we look carefully, we'll see we are back to the slow blinking green LED indicating that we are waiting for bind. And in just a second, it should pop up. And in fact, it should. Yes, there it is. There it is. It's connected to my home Wi-Fi network and now I can do whatever I want. Now the other way to flash a receiver is via Betaflight pass-through. So the ExpressLRS configurator sends data to the flight controller and then the flight controller passes that data through to the receiver. And I never do this. I only use Wi-Fi. And some of the reasons why I do that are like, look at, look at this documentation from the ExpressLRS uh, website. And the first time you flash it, you have to solder the bootloader pad, but then you have to remove the bootloader bridge for the set for the subsequent times because it's not needed anymore. And on some flight controllers, you'll need to install a pull-up resistor if you're going to do it this way. And and you may got to make sure that you have serial X inverted equals off and half duplex equals off, and you got to disable your telemetry. If oh my god, why? I don't know why you would ever do this when the Wi-Fi version is so simple and so easy. So if you absolutely have to, cannot flash via Wi-Fi, then here are the instructions for how to do serial pass-through. Don't do this though. Just do the Wi-Fi method if you at all possibly can. I'm not even going to demonstrate it. I hate it. It was fine before the Wi-Fi thing existed. Now it should just it should just go away. While we're here, I wanna show you an even more obscure method of flashing called flashing via FTDI. And the reason this is relevant is if you brick your receiver or brick your module, this is how you get it back. It's not permanently bricked. Um, like if you interrupt a flash halfway through and then it just won't power up and it won't work, this is how you can get it back. I just wanna point this out and let you know it exists. And I'll put a link down in the video description, but if, unless you brick your device, you should really never need to do this. Uh, what I wanna do at this point though, is go over some more ExpressLRS specific settings that I think you should be aware of. And we're gonna look in the ExpressLRS Lua script for that. And the first option I wanna talk about is the packet rate option. So ExpressLRS lets you choose between a very low latency control link, like four milliseconds, three milliseconds of latency between when you move the stick and when the flight controller sees your stick movement and a very long range link. And there's RF physics reasons why you can't have both of those things at the same time. So you can have a higher latency, really long range link or a very low latency, shorter range link. And when I say shorter range, it's still like really good range, but not like 60 kilometers. So this packet rate is where you decide that. With a 500 Hertz packet rate, that's gonna be the lowest latency and the longest possible, or the shortest range. If I need more range and I'm willing to tolerate a little bit more latency, I can change that packet rate and I can lower it all the way down as low as 50 hertz. So I can go between 50 and 500 hertz. Uh, 50 would be the longest range and the highest latency. 500 hertz would be the shortest range and the lowest latency. 
The telemetry ratio is how often ExpressLRS sends telemetry packets back to the receiver. The short version of this is if you're getting sensor lost, sensor lost while you're flying, you may need to change the telemetry ratio to something more frequent. So the default is one in every 128 packets, but if we change that to, we could also turn telemetry off by the way, if we wanted no telemetry for the most consistent packet rates. But if we change that telemetry ratio to one out of 64 or one out of 32, it will send telemetry packets more often. And if you're getting sensor lost, that will fix that. The switch mode. So I've set up this switch as an aux switch. And what I want you to see, if you look here in, at aux one, when the switch is all the way up, do you see aux one is at 2000? And when the switch is all the way down, aux one is at 1000. That's as it should be. But when the switch is in the middle position, nothing happens. And the reason for that goes back to this switch mode setting. Now the switch mode by default is hybrid, which means that some of the channels only can be three positions or only can be two positions. And it's gonna make your switches not work like you expect. What I'm gonna recommend everybody do is change their switch mode from hybrid to wide. And that's gonna mean that all of your aux channels have about, I think it's 128 positions available, which is more than enough resolution for almost anything you would need to do. This is, by the way, one of the limitations of ExpressLRS that some people may object to. Your control channels have full resolution, but your aux channels, in, that's one of the ways they get their, their great latency, their aux channels only have as much as 128 positions of resolution. But having done that, you'll notice that aux one is still only two positions. And the reason for this is a quirk of ExpressLRS is that aux one must always be your arming channel and high must always be armed. So you must go into the modes tab and set your arm mode so that aux one is arming and arming is in the high position. You have to do your arm mode exactly like is shown here, or you'll run into some problems with ExpressLRS. This is another limitation. TX power controls the output power of your module. Different modules will have different max powers. This Radio Maxter can go up to 250 milliwatts, uh, but not any higher. Some modules go as high as one watt. Uh, the higher the output power, the more range you'll get, but the faster you'll run your battery down. That's the gist of it. You can also enable dynamic power, which means that when the quad is closer to you, it, the radio reduces the output power. When the quad goes further away, it increases the output power. If you do this, you must have telemetry enabled. This doesn't work with telemetry enabled. Uh, it's a way of basically saving, saving a little bit of battery life if you're not flying too far away. I'd also like to point out that if you have a module with a screen and a joystick on it, you can change many of these options from within the module instead of within the Lua script, if you prefer to. And that is everything you could possibly want to know about Express LRS. No, there's more. There's more to learn. But I hope at this point that you've got the basics that you need to know to get started with your Express Solar system to get your hardware configured, flashed, and bound, and working together. And if that's true, then can I let you know that I have a Patreon? Patreon's a website where you can subscribe to me for as little as $2 a month or more if you feel like I've earned it. The amount is totally up to you. If you value the kind of content that I create and you wanna make it possible for me to keep making more, I'd love to have you as a subscriber. There's a link in the video description to my Patreon and I'll put a card on screen if it's easier for you to click that. If today's the day, the, the day that I earned it, I'd love to have you. If I haven't earned it yet, I'm gonna keep making content. I'm gonna keep giving away the content and maybe that day will come. Thank you so much for watching. Happy flying.